It's September the 14th, 2015. You're on a work trip to Hull. Yeah. And, and Nikki is at home. Correct, yeah. Um, and so pick up the story from there. Um, yeah, Nikki just called me late in the evening and said she was worried about somebody outside the house and that the police had been earlier. Um, and the children, to try and move the children are inside there. Children are in bed asleep. Yeah, what age it, were they at the time? Uh, Stanley was six and Isabella was three. Oh, oh my God. So uh, we were discussing options on the phone, what to do, and I was you know, telling her to leave the house and go to my mum and dad's. But before she could do anything, the guy broke in through the back doors and, uh, yeah, and killed her. And, and you were... heard all of this down the phone? Yes, yeah. And there was no doubt in your mind as to what had happened? No doubt whatsoever. No doubt whatsoever. And, and then it's been awful for you. Yeah, I mean, at the time, it's just complete shock. You don't know really what's going on. And are yeah. utterly helpless as well. Completely. 200 yeah. miles away. Completely, yeah. I was on the phone to the police on the other line trying to relay information. Yeah. But, um, yeah, listening, talking, just, yeah, it was, then, it was... then, and then you've got, so you've had, had this horrific uh, conversation um, w with your wife. Uh, and then, uh, as is blatantly apparent what has happened, but mm -hmm. then you've got the children in there as well. Yeah, so I didn't know what had happened to the children uh, until I heard them crying on the phone. And then I thought that they were OK. Oh, thank God yeah. for that. Thank God yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, uh, Nikki's killer um, was diagnosed as a paranoid <clears throat> schizophrenic um, and he killed Nikki whilst in the grips of a psychotic episode. Uh, medical investigations declared him unfit to plead and he accepted a charge of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility and he's sent to a psychiatric unit indefinitely. So where do you pick up from something like that? How do you... You've got two children, mm -hmm. so you have to find yeah. some way, find that strength. Where do you even begin? Uh, for me, with the children, it was being honest straight away with what was facing us, what the challenge was going to be, and not hiding things from them too much. Mm. No, no graphic details, mm. no horrible stuff, but being honest that mummy wasn't coming back, yeah. um, being honest that it was going to be the three of us and we were going to work on it together and get our lives back on track and that we were going to have happy lives. Well, you moved to your parents' house, didn't you? And I did, but, yeah. Uh, but there were times that whilst your house was on the market, mm -hmm. you would still go back? Of course, yeah. The, the children and I felt we couldn't go back to our home. It was, it was a, previously a safe environment and, and that had one. gone, the yeah. bubble had burst. So we stayed with my parents, but I would use the house to go back to... Uh, and use it as a, a sort of a alone place where I could lay out my emotions in, in private. And did you feel closer to her when you were there? Yeah, I did, yeah. When, you, when you're around your stuff, you, you feel closer to the person, definitely. You said uh, one of the most important things for you was the um, Homicide Victim Support Service recommended that you seek uh, trauma counselling. And you said that actually, being a man, you were like, I've, I probably don't need this, and you said you should have done it sooner. Yeah. Because actually when you did go down that road, it was the best thing you could have done. Absolutely. It's the best decision I ever made to say I do need help. Um, for the first month after Nikki was killed, it was flashbacks and being dragged back into that situation where I just felt like I couldn't breathe, yeah. I was underwater, I couldn't hear properly, that sort of thing, that I was back in that moment. And then I realised, you know, if I'm going to be a good dad to the kids and I'm going to make sure they grow up and have into confident, happy adults, then mm. I need to be the best dad I can be. And if that means getting help, then Can I will. Did they have counselling as well? Yes, Stanley started straight away. Isabella was too young, really, to yeah. need much trauma counselling. She was only three, so but the brain works very differently. Scary memories for Stanley. Oh. Yeah, very. And he's still a very anxious boy. Is he? Yeah, constant work, and we need to sort of monitor him really closely. I mean, really, it's, it's only been two, two years, I guess, yeah. so it's still early, early, early Yeah, two and a half years, yeah. And so how are you doing now? I'm doing really well. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Of course, you know, we um, make every day special for the kids and we make Nikki part of our daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, personally, I'm doing really well, you know. Well, you were, uh, because of other health issues, um, you had the conversation that, that we should probably all have, but nobody ever does with Nikki. Yeah. And she was poorly and, and, and she did say, you know, if anything ever happened to me, you know, be happy, move on 
Um, and you never recover from something like that. Obviously, you just realign your life mm -hmm. in whatever way you can. Um, and uh, I think it was a year, was it a year ago today that you met, um, that you met Alex? Uh, this weekend coming, so really? yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, a year. And, uh, and Alex has fitted so beautifully into your lives, hasn't she? She absolutely has, yeah. She just sort of came in with, just let everything sort of wash over her. I mean, it's, it's a brave decision to get involved with a family that's had something Well, she's like a mental to. health clinician. She is, she? yeah. So, so she's been perfect with the children. Absolutely, yeah. She specialises under fives, um, but she can do things with the kids, techniques and things that I don't know anything Memory about. Memory boxes. Memory boxes, uh, yeah. Using your hands and your, and your senses to remember That's certain memories. It's, it's, find someone like her that could, comes in and keeps that memory alive. Also. Yeah, you know, it's been amazing. It, quite freaky really to have somebody come in that's and in so the, perfect. Another way, of, uh, the amazing way of paying it forward, um, you are, uh, you, you, you're now taking counselling um, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a career, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking you're going through your training now and, you're, and that's what you want well, to yeah, do? Yeah, I'm volunteering with victim support to uh, be a peer supporter to other families that are going through uh, similar situations to us, homicide and manslaughter and they will refer people to me and I will just lend a sympathetic ear over the phone and uh, listen to their problems and it, it's, it's, you get an instant connection with somebody that's been through something similar to you. Of yeah. course, yeah. So they don't have to put on a pretense, I don't have to put on a pretense and we can just chat.